This is Resolute and the Resolute Podcast, where we make men better. I am Vince Miller, your host, and today we're in a series we're entitling A Man's Pursuit of Purpose. Today, we're discussing the topic of building the right framework. Men, welcome back to the program. If this is your first time tuning in, well, thank you for joining us. The Resolute Podcast is produced multiple times each week. Come back often. Feel free to add the podcast to your favorite feed or find us in iTunes. And remember, we exist to make men better because we know today's man faces unique personal challenges and an eroding understanding of biblical manhood. At Resolute, we desire to help men grow spiritually by providing them with a spiritual game plan that will launch them toward being better men, fathers, husbands, and leaders. Because we believe when you make one man better, everyone gets better. For more information on our spiritual mentoring program for individuals or groups, go to BeResolute.org. We have numerous great tools for here, including our free Men's Daily Devo. It is a short, straightforward, and sweet email to get in your inbox each day just to charge your day with God's Word. Check out all the resources on our website. But let's dive in. Well, let's begin this series by clearly defining the pivotal word, In this series, which is the word purpose. You know, a purpose is defined as the reason for which some action is done or something is created. And while I assume most of us already understand this, it's not the definition that eludes us, right? But rather discovering why, how, and for what we were made. You know, I know many men that I meet often find themselves perplexed by this question and are a loss for direction as they seek their unique purpose in this life. And this lost feeling can produce feelings of confusion and anger and even a downward spiral of hopelessness. You know, my wife and daughter often lose their car keys around our home. I am not sure if this happens in your home, but it goes on all the time in our home. And for them, this produces feelings that often resemble the lostness of living devoid of purpose. While I know this is a little bit of a reach, maybe, I think it captures on a myopic level many of the same feelings. Seriously. As they're frantically searching around the house for their keys, I think of people or men that I know who are frantically searching for their purpose in this life. And I often explain to my wife if she would just consistently put her keys in the same place place each time she came in the door that she would probably find herself less confused and angry and hopeless at the moment she's racing out the door to her next appointment, right? Right? You know, years ago, I used to misplace my keys all the time as well, but one day I simply had enough and determined a location that I was going to set my keys every time I entered the home. And guess what? They're always there, honey. They're always there. When I look for my keys, I know where they are. They're sitting on my dresser next to my bed every single time. And I mean always, because I do this every time. I never have to search for them. And guess what? All the feelings of confusion and anger and hopelessness have gone away with it only because I've purposed a pattern, a behavior, and a location for my keys. It's a process, right? And I believe if we could find and determine our purpose, then life would be much less frustrating. (laughs) Isn't that what we want? You know, while our purpose may feel like it eludes us, like a ring of lost keys, this does not have to be the case, gentlemen. We can find our purpose. You can find your purpose. And we can live more purposeful lives which, with much less confusion and discover the power and the freedom of a life lived on purpose. But... 
We must remember that our personal pursuit of purpose is not as simple as finding keys, right? (laughs) While the definition of purpose comes easy for objects, take like a hammer whose purpose is to drive nails into wood or remove them, and while it's easy to describe the purpose of a process, for example, like finding our keys, a human purpose is much more complex and unique to each person. And this will require you, I promise, in this series, require you to ask some probing questions of yourself. Mark Twain, the famed satirist, (laughs) touches on this idea in his renowned quote where he says, The two most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. (laughs) You know, Mark Twain was spot on, guys. And as some of us know, the payoff of purposeful living is incredible. If we find and leverage our purpose, then the way we live is impacted. With purpose, we view life with a new perspective. We handle our circumstances with different enthusiasm. And we have a higher potential for influencing others. When we live on and within our purpose, we become less prone to distraction and our thoughts and actions align for maximum impact. And I promise you, that's what all of us want. We want a very fulfilling, meaningful, purposeful life. In today's podcast, we're looking to clarify a man's pursuit of purpose by giving you a framework, a framework for thinking about your pursuit of purpose. You know, I believe for some of you, this framework will be revolutionary. For others, it might just be a fresh reminder. But if we see our purpose through this framework that I'm about to give you, then our purpose will always be more clear to us on a daily basis annual basis, right? First, first, we must understand that purpose begins with God and he has divine purposes. First, divine purposes. You know, these purposes fall into something that theologians call God's sovereign will. Divine purposes are a predestined and unstoppable act of God in which there is no way it will not happen. These are what make God the God of the universe. And we must say that God is sovereign and must allow whatever occurs to occur or he ceases to be God. You know, even when God passively allows things to happen, he chooses to let them in a way that he has the power and the right to intervene. So even when God has, quote unquote, allowed certain circumstances in our life, he has still purposed them. And while this is disturbing to many people, God can and will allow whatever he wills sovereignly. Otherwise, our definition and understanding of God are completely insufficient. You know, but, 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 but we also know that there are things that God cannot do. How how does that make you feel? There are things that God cannot do. For example, God cannot, cannot sin. Again, just because he cannot sin, this does not infer that God is not giving oversight to the parameters of sin, but that he allows it. But sin never exceeds his divine purposes. In fact, to not digress too much here, God deals a fatal blow to the spiritual and eternal consequences of sin through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Sin, while not maybe initiated by God, has no power over our divine destiny. And for Christ following men, this means that we must recognize that all purpose comes from, by, and through God. He is, after all, the designer, the creator, and the one who divines all divine purpose. Just look at Psalm 139, 13 through 14. 139, 13 through 14. It's very illuminating. Hear these words from David, king and poet. For you, that's God, for you formed my inward parts. You, God, knit 
knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And you know what? God, the creator of man, will not conceal his divine purposes from his creation. By creating us, he gives us purpose. Because everything created has purpose, as do you and me. God is revealing these to us so that we will be amazed, as David is here, by our creator and how he condescends to use us. And I believe that this is staggering. First, divine purpose. Second, we must also realize that God has also defined defined moral purpose. Moral purpose. I believe most men who follow Christ understand this, but often forget that moral purpose intersects with our purpose. You know, perhaps one of the greatest treaties in the Bible on moral purpose is found in the Ten Commandments. Ten moral laws were given to us for right living and relationship between God and other people. Jesus, of course, later summarizes these 10 into two in the Gospels, giving us the great commandments, love God, love others, right? Much of our purpose is to strive to live under God's divine purposes and within his moral purpose. Connecting these dots is another step to successfully constructing our framework, our purpose framework. When we live within God's moral purposes, we are aligning the divine with the human. At this point, the human meets with God and the divine. And while God does give us the freedom to live outside of his moral purpose, we do not have the right to violate it when indwelled by the Spirit. God wants us to live a life of righteousness when we surrender our will to his will. Note what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. For this is the will of God, your sanctification right? The sanctification of your morality, of your righteousness, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warn you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this disregards not man, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Guys, God's purpose for us is to live within his moral purposes. But remember, while we will attempt to live a moral life, we will at many points fail. Yep, me too, right? Here's where we lean on God's divine purpose in through and by his son, Jesus Christ. We must be careful here to clarify that the Bible never suggests that we have the power to achieve righteousness based on our morality, but rather righteousness based on Christ's morality. This is where we lean. In moral purpose, we live between a great tension, the tension between trusting in our moral inadequacy and striving striving and running in the power of the Spirit. Third, and finally, we discover our unique purpose. First, divine purpose. Second, moral purpose. Third, our unique purpose. You know, when it comes to finding our purpose, this is where we want immediate answers often. While We may want to begin here. This is not the place to begin, but this should be the place we end. Because beginning here can lead to conceit and self-centeredness where we rely on our strength rather than God's strength. Divine and moral purpose are the leading priority for the Christian man, even when we feel like our unique purpose evades us, even when. And it is alignment with these three that reveals our unique purposes. You know, I have always appreciated the way my Texas friend Lance Lennertz from formerly Campus Crusade for Christ, now called Crew, illustrates this to students in his college ministry. Often, he would find that young men and young women felt overwhelming pressure to find the right spouse while in college. 
The imagery he leaned on as he counseled them was the image of a man running a marathon through life. At the start, he's running alone, and he's focused on running with diligence toward the prize. And instead of being obsessed with running around looking for a spouse, he suggested that it is far more important to be focused on running the race with Christ. And through this obedience, one day, a man will look over, and he'll see a woman running with him. And at this moment, they may decide to run the race with Christ together. And they can. And this is how you find a mate a spouse, he suggested. You know, what a great illustration that I believe applies not only to finding a mate, but finding our unique purpose. You see, when we run a race seeking purpose, when we run a race seeking purpose, what we're really looking for is the moment that God's divine and moral purpose meet up with our unique purpose. Our unique purpose is something we often attach to far too frequently and exclusively, only our work and our vocation. But please remember, our unique purpose is not exclusive to this. And each of us is designed to serve in this life uniquely. To a high degree, your spiritual gifting, personal talents, and unique passion play a significant role in revealing this, but this is only discovered over time. And while we may want to rush to this, we cannot, but I promise it will get clearer or perhaps more refined as we run the race. And I will say this from experience, order here is critical using this framework. Divine purpose moral purpose, then unique purpose. While we do find some purpose in our work and vocation, this is not who we are, but rather what we do. Our identity is only, gentlemen, found in Jesus Christ and in his divine and moral purpose. Men who attach their identity to their unique purpose exclusively are often disappointed to discover that this is not purposeful Christian living. Jesus was explicit about this in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. It reads, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Guess what Jesus is after in these words here? He's after everything, especially our unique purpose. And for Jews, this statement would have been revolutionary. It would have been the greatest sacrifice that they could have made since all their identity, all their unique purpose was wrapped up in the family because the family was their livelihood, it was how they ate, it was how they found meaning. And what does Jesus ask them to do here? He asks them to sacrifice all things, including their identity, and to lay it at his feet. Otherwise, they cannot be a disciple. Gentlemen, there you have it. A framework for thinking through your purpose. Divine moral, and unique purpose. The previous two are unchanging and are our priority when living out our identity. But please hear me. God has also designed each of us uniquely for a purpose in this life, a contribution that you will make to this life that will uphold both of his previous two purposes. To find purpose, we must strive for alignment between these three over a lifetime. Well, gentlemen, that's the show. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. But please know that the time we spent together is worthless unless you act on it. And I want to help you act on this by putting a resource in your hands. Just go to the website at beresolute.org. Click on content and then go to this series and this lesson. There are all kinds of additional resources that go with this podcast. And please know that I want you to be spiritually successful as a man of God. If you ever want to connect with me personally, I would love to hear from you. Reach out to me at my personal email at info at beresolute.org. That's info at beresolute.org. 
Guys, we would love to have you consider a donation to the podcast. This is not possible without donors like you. Even a small gift of $1 to $5 a month makes a huge difference. Just head to the website, hit the store on the menu bar. You can give gifts there under the donations tab. All gifts are tax deductible. I would be honored to have you contribute to this ministry. And guys, remember, get off the bench, get into the game, and join us next time for another edition in this series of the Resolute Podcast. Resolute Podcast.